morning team, how are you? If you are new, uh, welcome to my channel, my name is Bernie and uh, today we're going to follow on from our previous mini Evo uh, conversation where we took a really deep dive into what the camera is all about and a, a nice tutorial whereas today we're going to look at some of the accessories and you might notice the, uh, uh, the external viewfinder there on the top of the camera that may work for this camera and might um, offer some some really nice creative avenues for the for the camera and, and, and some new ways to use it. So, and things that, that just might make your life easier. So we're out of Kerry Kerry again today. So we're gonna um, kind of go for a bit of a walk around and um, we're gonna use some of these accessories and just talk through them and just see whether they're right for your style of photography. Alrighty then, let's get straight into it. So our first accessory today and something that I think is just absolutely crucial is some way to protect your camera. Um, I, I didn't have a lens cap um, with mine, so I think it's you know really critical to protect the lens and also the camera. So first I've got, um, and these are the things I've already I've already have. I didn't actually go out and buy these things. Uh, these are this you know things that I already had in my kit uh, that I could repurpose to protect the camera. So the first one is this nice little kind of Fuji film. Um, uh, cloth cover so these come with uh, Fujifilm XF and GF lenses um, so this just kind of wraps in quite nicely but you could make one of these or you could pick one up or even just use a little bit of cloth as a, as a wrap um, so it fits it perfectly and it just means that it protects the camera from getting any rubs and scratches to be honest though that one's not overly crucial for me um, unless you can't find uh, the next accessory um, because I actually don't mind the camera getting worn and you know scratched on the outer body and you know it, it just adds to the character of the camera. This part of it though is probably the most crucial and that's the lens cap. So something that didn't come with the camera uh, but I feel that is uh, you know very very important because the last thing you want is a scratch over the optical element. Uh, well it's not an optical element, it's a plastic lens but um, it will you know potentially affect uh, the image quality and it's the one thing that you want to protect. Uh, on your camera so I've looked high and low for a, a lens uh, a cap that would fit uh, the uh, you know you might be able to find a standard you know uh, clip-on lens cap uh, but what I've um, found is this um, old X10 uh, camera lens cap so it is a Fujifilm uh, lens cap it might be harder to find but I just happen to have a spare one at home um, so I've, um, I've repurposed that and it actually fits perfectly onto the front of that camera and it's extremely snug as well so that's what I've done uh, but like I said you could just use just the um, the cover you might find that that's enough for you and when you've got it over your shoulder you're not going to have the lens cap on it anyway um, otherwise find it you know take it into a store and just say hey do you have a lens cap that fits this and just try a few options but I do feel that the push on lens cap um, even a third party one would probably be your best bet next uh, accessory we've got for you and lucky you, you actually get this with the camera is a strap you know it's something that I just find absolutely crucial now you can use the neck strap that comes with it or you could um, and the only thing I'd probably change this out for is maybe a wrist strap for shorter trips uh, if you just want to kind of use it um, you know at a party or at a social event or you know you just kind of want to go for a bit of a walk and just a kind of a grab and go type situation I think that might actually work better than having it around your neck because um, then you've just got it in your hand all the time and it's just kind of ready to go and a little bit more accessible. So um, yeah, so that's kind of what I think about that. But um, as you can see, these strap lugs um, are quite tight. So I tried to put my Peak Design uh, removable uh, strap lugs on there, but it didn't quite fit. So uh, look, I would just recommend using the one that came in the box. It's, you know, it's a light camera, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite comfy around your neck anyway. So um, yeah, stick with that. It's a problem solved. Um, you get one with the camera. Awesome work, Fujifilm. Alrighty, we're whizzing uh, through these today. We're already up to accessory number three. So um, this one's a bit of a weird one because I wouldn't recommend this product exactly, but I like the idea. So given that Fujifilm have decided to put a cold shoe uh, mount on the top of their camera you can mount accessories like this so this here is a um, LED panel um, so it's, it's a nice constant light that you can put on the top of your camera 
and if I turn it on on the side here you'll see what I mean so it gives you a nice little hit of light um, and this one's like I said way over engineered for what we'd need to use it for because for this one here you can actually change the um, saturation so you can actually turn it into a uh, kind of a blue color I don't know if you can see that there um, but you can also uh, change the intensity so you can turn it all the way down or you can make it extremely bright as well for, for tougher conditions. Um, so I like that um, part about it, turning it up and down, but the size of it is just way too big, I think, for this camera. Uh, it's just too bulky. You can get some really nice small ones that are about a quarter of the size. That would work extremely well. And you would use this in situations like I find myself in. It's extremely dark underneath the uh, overgrowth here. Um, and obviously, if you're taking kind of selfies uh, with friends um, or groups, uh, this actually probably does a little bit of a better job uh, lighting up the scene uh, rather than having kind of flash kind of popped out um, and, and hitting you as well. And given the the flash isn't overly strong and it will only go to maybe a, a couple of meters, um, this is an extremely powerful light, as you can see. So you might be able to get a better result at um, further distances of say, you know, um, three to, to, to five meters if you just need to really open up the, the lighting in the scene. Um, so I like the idea of this, like I said, I would try and find a smaller one. And it's also good for taking photos of things like um, just objects, plants in, in, in nature, leaves, things like that, where again, it's in a darker environment and you can just add a little burst of light to the subject and then the, um, the rest of the image can kind of fall into darkness as well. So a really cool creative tool, something that you might be interested in picking up and giving a, a go. Um, but yeah, not critical to the use of the camera, not something that I think you have to go out and buy. But maybe down the track, if you feel like you want to open up your creative outlets, um, then maybe give the um, cold shoe um, light a, a, a crack. Okay, so something that I have found is if you're going to use a, an on-camera light, um, I would actually tune down the exposure reading uh, by say one to two. Um, that just adds a little bit more, it just darkens the scene off a little bit. And when the light comes in to light up your subject, it actually makes it kind of pop out and gives it a bit more kind of contrast. Um, so it doesn't just um, expose kind of, it, it, it would overexpose it otherwise. Okay, the, so although it's extremely windy and I do apologize if it starts to buster, um, I do uh, just want to head to the beach there and grab some shots and get some samples of, of that as well. So um, if it gets too windy, I'll probably just overlay some music and then uh, enjoy the scenery. Whose idea was this? It's so windy. Oh my god. It is so windy. But how beautiful is this? Well, that was a terrible idea. The beach was just far, far, far too windy. Lucky I had my cover to put on the um, the Mini Evo because there was sand everywhere. I got sand in my mouth and my eyes. I don't have any water to to kind of wash it out, so it was pretty horrible. So we're going to head back inland, and we're going to finish off the remaining accessories there and get a few more sample photos. So accessory number four, and this may not come as much of a surprise because I did use it in my previous video on the Mini evo uh, and that uh, accessory is a tripod so a lot of you asked what tripod i'm using uh, so this is the uh, manfrotto elements um, but this may be big uh, too big for for some of you. Um, you you know you might not want something of, of this size i just use it because it's um, generally uh, what i've got on me uh, while i'm um, you know taking my other digital camera photos so um, as we discussed in the previous video, this allows you to use the remote uh, camera feature because you can set it up on the tripod, then you can actually move back away from it and then get your phone out and then actually take a photo of yourself and see it on the screen. And if you want to know how that's done, um, check out the, uh, the link in uh, my description to the previous video 
and I'll go through it from start to finish in, in that video. And all you would need to make um, use of that tripod is one of these little uh, tripod uh, mounts. Uh, so all you do then is just pop it into the top of the uh, tripod there and then turn this wheel here to lock it in. I think I'm actually loosening it up. There we go, locking it in. And then you kind of set to go. So it's extremely easy and you can buy a different tripod mount obviously for this and one for your digital camera. So then you can just swap the cameras out as you feel like, super easy. So that's a huge one for me. But look, if that tripod is too big, uh, let me grab something else that might help you out. If you do find these videos helpful and uh, they give you a bit of an insight into a product you might wanna buy or, or might fix an issue that you've got, um, I would appreciate you uh, it, appreciate it if you did like and subscribe because that's the best way to support my channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. Alrighty, so the other option you've got when it comes to tripods is this little guy. And look, nothing special about it. It is just a generic miniature tripod. Uh, so I'll just spin the camera around here. So just a generic miniature tripod there uh, with a little uh, kind of ball head. Uh, which means that you can actually rotate it around. So again, this is great for if you want to use that remote camera feature on the app. Um, so it's just, uh, it just screws in the top uh, just here. Um, and um, it's just got these little legs that um, you, know, you can go um, higher or lower with. But the best thing about it is the ball head means that you can actually move this to whatever angle, up or down, back or forth, uh, that you need to. Quick demonstration. So this just twists on. So that's now secure. But what you've got here on the other side is you can just release the ball head and this now swivels around. So you can actually, like I said, tilt it back, tilt it forward, side to side, depending on the angle in which the uh, tripod is sitting on. So an extremely um, handy thing. And um, when you're finished, you can just spin that off and it collapses down into this. I think I haven't noticed. I know you've been looking at the camera thinking, what the hell is that on top of it? And I know I gave you a spoiler earlier, but we've actually got, and I know, uh, quite a few of you have been asking about this in my previous video because it was the one thing that um, I thought could have been improved on the, on the Evo, and that was the viewfinder, because there isn't one. But what I've done is I've found a external viewfinder to go on top, so that just slots straight into that cold shoe on the top. So really easy and you're done. So um, yeah, and so obviously the lens is a 28 millimeter lens. So I found a, an external finder um, that is a 28 millimeter finder and you might be able to see that on the top there, 28 millimeters. Um, so really easy to find. It's, um, it was an extremely cheap um, viewfinder. So it was only, I think it was uh, $20 New Zealand, but you can get them for like, uh, geez, I don't know, uh, I think $15, $10 New Zealand if you wanted to, to wait a little bit longer and get it overseas. Look, I'd always recommend you support your, your, your local shops, um, buy it locally, um, and you'll get it quicker anyway. You know, and it's, it's not like we're talking about a lot of money. Uh, this is a cheaper one, so it is just plastic uh, with a little plastic um, inner. Uh, but what it does do is it just gives you an idea in terms of framing, um, and you can obviously have that immersive experience with your camera instead of um, you know, just looking at the screen, which is really good for some things, but sometimes you just want to bring it up to your eye and get the shot, which is, you know, what I'm really um, uh, in for. So uh, would I recommend this? I would, especially if you're taking photos of general subjects like cars, uh, buildings, uh, street photos, um, you know, uh, landscapes, uh, things of that uh, nature. But if you really wanted to focus in on, um, you know, smaller items like, you know, a, a leaf or a, or something, then I would actually recommend you pull the camera away from your face and make sure that that focus point is exactly where you want it to be on your subject. So depending on how precise you want to be with your autofocus, um, it's going to determine whether you use the LCD screen or the viewfinder. But the benefit here is because it is so small, you can just leave it on and you can go between the two. So if you're just taking a general landscape photograph, you can get right in there, use the viewfinder, 
you know, Bob's your uncle. However, if you wanted to, like I said, take a photo of these leaves, then pull it away from your face, get that focus point, and nail the shot. So another thing to note, uh, if you were wondering, is the um, viewfinder does work in both uh, landscape, so like this, and obviously um, um, portrait as well. You just twist the camera like this. So either orientation do work, um, you know, just as well. So I thought I'd just mention that just in case you're kind of thinking, but hold on, I only shoot portraits um, and you've got it in landscape mode. The reason I've got a landscape mode is I do like shooting in that orientation. So um, yeah, so it works in both. So whichever way you go, you know, you, we've got you covered. So. Excellent. Look, as always, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Um, it's always good to have some company while I'm out shooting. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. I really do appreciate your support. And please comment in the uh, comment section and let me know which one of these accessories or, or, or more accessories do you think you would actually find useful and which ones do you think just aren't for you and why? Look, that's all for today, but um, appreciate you stopping by. And uh, like I said, I'll be out next week with the Mini Lee Play versus the Mini Evo video, as I know a lot of you are trying to decide between. So hopefully I can help you out. So stay tuned. Okay, see you later.